In this show, Changi's airport emergency services face the ultimate test. Okay. Baggage detection are on alert for security threats. I'm asking you. And illegal stashes. Okay, okay, that was, that was. And missed flights leave passengers stranded at the airport. After that, when I go to Cambodia, they tell me where is the yeah. train ticket. This is Singapore, where the old world meets new metropolis. At its heart is this Changi Airport, Singapore's jewel in the crown. With unprecedented access, we go inside Changi, voted world's best airport, to find out what makes it tick. It's landing in right now. For passengers, it's an oasis of peace and calm. But for the 40,000 staff who keep it that way, emergency, emergency. it can be anything but. I've had nightmares. The electrical for the aircraft is not working anymore. Where's the engineer? If it doesn't work, really, I'm going to cry, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your attention. With two runways and three terminals, Changi is one of the world's busiest airports. With a thousand flights a day and 55 million passengers a year, its 40,000 staff work round the clock to please. In this airport, efficiency is king. As is service with a smile. The Immigration and Checkpoints Authority safeguards Singapore's borders. This airport has security systems to rival the world's top banks. It's the ICA's job to make sure that the movement of people and goods is legitimate and lawful. At Terminal 2's baggage collection, it's the morning shift for Immigration Officer Kumar and his team of officers in the baggage detection unit as they make ready to search all who enter here. Common detections, uh, flick knives, nightsticks, uh, handcuffs, Batons, knuckle dusters, all this is under Singapore Police Force, more of a security threat. Apart from that, under Health Science Authority, sex enhancement pills, slimming pills in large quantity for commercial use, that is also a main concern. And uh, yeah, now another rise, significant rise is vape or electronic cigarettes. Every officer has a role to play as they confront any would-be smugglers in an intricate game of looks, signals, you all have anything to declare with you all. and charm offensive. You all arriving from? Just engaging with small checks helps a lot. That few seconds, we will be able to find out whether are they giving me any kind of telltale indicators. <laughs> Do you have a knife in your bag? Uh, yes, a bit. In Singapore, knives are either prohibited or restricted depending on their type and design. Okay, this is fine. While Kumar takes care of business on the front line, another team are getting match fit on the tarmac. But these men aren't here for fun. They are the airport emergency services. At any given moment, they are ready for action. Action they hope they won't have to take. These are the airport's dedicated firefighters. Watched over by operations commander, Alexander. It's a huge responsibility. After all, you know, the safety and the lives of passengers are 
are in our hands. I think the hardest part of this job is making sure that myself and my guys are ready and are prepared to handle a crash. Changi has three fire stations by the runways and a fourth on the coast. So the guys at the Sea Rescue Base are also under my charge and uh, today I am going to conduct my routine inspection on them and check on them, make sure that everything is in place, everything is in order, that training is being conducted and conducted properly. Please advise our location of emergency over. Training is a way of life for all fire officers at all stations. Station 1, over rescue, leaving base now, proceeding to crash location over. They're in constant preparation for any worst case scenario. We arrive at the crash site. There is immediate visual of two casualties. Straight away surface rescue is down to proceed with the rescue. Singapore is surrounded by territorial waters. So in the event, if an aircraft were to land short of the runway and ditches into the sea, the resources here at the sea rescue base will turn out and they will carry out firefighting and rescue out at sea. Whilst his officers keep watch at the coast 24-7, most of the action takes place at other stations. Fire Station 2's latest recruit is 23-year-old Scheifel. Before I came here, I'm a bit nervous because I don't know how is it like going to be at a station. But after I came here, yeah, I need to learn a lot of things on the station routine, mostly equipment-wise. For Alexander, it's a stressful time of year. Yo, Fendi, how's the preparation for Bobcat coming along? Bobcat is code for aircraft crash exercise. As commander, he'll be under the microscope. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll see you are coming. Okay, let them know. Okay, okay thank thanks, you. Fendi. See you. Bye. The fire service has 180 officers on shift at any one time across terminals and runways. To keep his men on their toes, Alexander carries out reaction tests often. Once triggered, they have between 15 and 20 seconds to drop whatever they're doing, leap into vehicles, suit up and exit the station. Can you activate reaction test now? Thanks. OK, sir. I'm about to do the reaction test now. Success for now, and Alexander can rest easy. Inside Terminal 2, Changi's customer service teams, known locally as Changi's experience agents, are at full stretch. Oh, okay, sure. yeah. As they man 15 stations across three terminals and patrol the airport. Both ends at the center. This army of helpers tackle passenger problems big and small. Today, Agent Nina has a British backpacker who needs help. This is Kyle. It's his first time in Asia. Um, I arrived at one o'clock, so I came from Phuket and it's just meant to be a connecting flight to Bali. He's been rejected from his flight to Bali because he doesn't have an onward bound ticket. To make matters worse, Kyle doesn't have enough cash to pay for a flight and he no longer has his credit card. All I can do is pay for things online, which I've tried to do. Um, they, have, they have lent me their tablet, which is very helpful them, but for some reason or another, it's just not uh, registering, even though I've used the same bank cards to book flights and travel, what have you, um, over the last six months. Um, so all I can do is try and contact home and just say to my sister, book one and you can take the money back, kind of thing. Is she online? 
No, she's at work in the UK. It's probably about 8.30. 8 but you already missed your current flight. They gave me until 2.50, it's now 2.49. You have your sister's number? Yeah. It's not successful. We'll try again. So we're basically trying to call my sister back in Jersey, who's currently at work. It's nine o'clock in the morning, and she's not going to be happy. So you get me a flight and get me out of Singapore, basically. Yeah. Meanwhile, the baggage detection unit are eyeballing passengers entering Singapore. But nothing gets past Kumar who has a hunch that a passenger who has declared three packs of tobacco is hiding something. But now they've found a fourth. How long have you been in Singapore? Eight years. Eight years? Yes. Can you tell me about this? Is this a kuih? Yes. This is a kuih. What is it? This man may wish he'd given up smoking earlier. Kumar's team has also found an electronic cigarette or vape. Okay, okay, tak boleh pegang eh. Saya pegang eh. Oh, tadi awak cakap tiga je. Ni dah berapa ni? Oh, this group take kawan tu je. Ah? Take kawan group je. Alah, saya tanya berapa? Take kawan tu kan. Okey, okey, tak apa, tak apa. Jangan pegang. Biar saya pegang. Ha? Lagi ada tak? Very fast. Ana tak tu ah. Saya tak sini ah duit eh. You only declare three packets, which is this three. Upon checking, I found a few more packets, including the electronic cigarette. Yep. For the cigarettes, or rather the loose tobacco, it's more of a revenue concern. It's under Singapore customs, which I'm going to deal with them later. And uh, for the vape, it'll be more like a seizure. I'd be able to detain the item on behalf of our health science authority. Yeah, it's a nice looking one. But unfortunately, it's not a lot here. Will Changi's agents get this confused passenger on a flight? You're going to Manila. Okay, this is Philippine Airlines, not Sri Lankan Air. Will Kyle reach his sister or stay stranded without cash at the airport? You have your sister's number? Yeah. And what will Kumar and his team make of this suspicious metal object? Are you working here? Yeah, tending, tending. At Singapore's Changi Airport, precision, efficiency, and customer service rule. Voted world's best airport by passengers, its three terminals serve over 100 airlines and connect to 320 cities. But Kyle, a British backpacker, can't afford to fly to any of them. He was rejected from his flight to Bali because he did not have an onward-bound ticket. You have your sister's number? Yeah. With next to no cash and no credit card, he's stranded and desperate to get in touch with his sister for help. Ah, just got a text off her. So that's the full number, that's area code and everything. Ah, it's ringing. Thank you. Hello. Uh, where are you? I thought you were at work. Oh, right, is it? Oh, it's only 8 o'clock back home. She's, in, <laughs> she's just got out of bed. Um, I'm in Singapore right now. Lovely airport. <laughs> Book some sort of flight and then transfer it from my account to yours. I don't know whether just to go to Oz. All right, cheers. Thanks very much. Right. So um, she can transfer over the cash? Um, yeah, well, she's going to try and just book me a flight. Um, okay. I'm thinking just to go straight to Australia now, instead of Bali. This one, right? Thank you. Hey, how's it going? I'm getting what? <laughs> it's a weird thing to hear, but yeah, let's do this. <laughs> um, so we're just checking flights at the minute, and funny enough, uh, one came up to Brisbane, <laughs> but it was um, one changeover in Bali. <laughs> Joke. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye. You got it? So close. So that solved your problem. You get to go to Bali. <laughs> Depending. <laughs> I get a confirmation.
In the farthest corner of Changi Airport, it's a busy day for the animal and plant quarantine station. Here, the hard-working team of vets and trained officers work round the clock to keep Singapore safe from epidemics, pests and diseases. Jan is waiting for a batch of racehorses arriving from New Zealand. Our horses are, can be quite dangerous animals, they're huge animals. Any wrong move, if they kick, it can cause serious injuries to the people around them. And I also have to take care of myself, of course, because I'm doing the, the checks. One mistake, and these spooked animals okay. will make a bid for freedom. With a kick that can kill, Hang on, stop. pulling, prodding and scanning is not for the faint-hearted. The team will have to hold their nerve. When I was new at this, I was scared. And now, as long as you know where to stand, where to go, how to move, how the horses respond, I think you should get used to this. I've written down the microchip number. This horse um, is a little bit spooked out. Once one, one horse gets anxious, the rest will also get anxious. Oh, there you go. Oh, this looks like a skin abrasion, um, so it should heal up, actually. Twelve racehorses are good to go. After 14 days of quarantine, they will cross the border and become Singapore's welcome guests. In Terminal 2 arrivals, Kyle has news from his sister in the UK, who is trying to help him get out of Singapore. My sister's currently trying to book my flight back in the UK. It just happens to be the same website that I tried to do it on last time, and she's getting the same message as I am, just saying that it was not successful and tickets could not be issued. She's going to try and call them, but obviously she's at work, so I'm just saying if you have to wait, couple of hours until your lunch break. So I don't want her to get in any trouble back at work. It seems that Kyle is now trapped in the world's best airport. Operations Commander Alexander is a man with a plan. Today, this airport will stage a plane crash with casualties, real fire and real people. He will need brains as well as brawn to pull this off. So what we're going to test, the main objective is actually to set up RS within six minutes as mm. well as to receive the casualty as well as to report to, report to the DO in charge mm. in regards to the casualty. Everybody's yeah, okay. The two objectives uh, I want to see is timing for the RS setup and then casualty management. Okay, no problem. Because during really CPT, if these two things we don't fulfill, uh, we will sure. Yeah, definitely. We will sure be penalized. Okay. So this is something that we will take. Okay. 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 Nine thirty eight. Yeah. Elsewhere, Shifel is also being put through his paces. This is pump to pump, connecting two tanks from two fire trucks together to boost the water supply. All drills hurt. This one hurts more. Water tender one three. I turn down. Come in. We need to keep our fitness up to the standard. Shifel may be fit, but the going is tough. And tonight, it's going to get tougher. Every day, passengers bring 120,000 bags through this airport. And every day, security teams check, scan, and search for illegal or dangerous contraband. Kumar's team have detected a suspicious object at Terminal 2. There's some metallic gems item found in his luggage upon the X-ray machine. You put your bag there. Machine. Yeah, machine. 
traveler claims it's used more for industrial purposes, for cutting uh, machineries, uh, met, met, it, uh, raw metal items. But we are just a bit curious why is it hidden? Come here, work. Huh? Are you working here? Yeah, training, training. Training? Yeah. Okay, Ken. He have claimed that it's for his work purpose, his tool. So it doesn't pose any security threat. So we are giving back to him. In a region where many languages are spoken, communication can be slow going. But to protect and secure Singapore's borders is Kamar's sole concern. Have you taken all your items? Okay. Initially, he was a bit uh, tense and nervous because of, firstly, firstly, we have to be mindful more, it's because of the language barrier. No, that was a language barrier, he couldn't communicate well. However, he was able to answer the, the simple questions, why, what's the, his entry for, and how long is his uh, stay, intended stay in Singapore and uh, his accommodation. He was very um, confident with his answers, and we are satisfied. So, assess, our assessment of the whole fact is clean. Okay. One, Meanwhile, at Terminal 3, Agent JR has a tricky number on his hand. I'll try, don't worry. This passenger might have had one drink too many. He can't find his way to the gate. You came from which airlines? Sri uh, Lankan Airlines. Joining which airlines? Sri Lankan. You're going to Manila. Okay, this is Philippine Airlines, not Sri Lankan Air, okay? You go to... <laughs> yeah, I understand. You see that one? It's SkyTrain to T1? Yes. Transfer D to get your boarding pass. But hurry up, okay? Okay, what? Sir, you take this train, and then you go to Terminal 1. Terminal 1? You go to Transfer D, Delta, okay? Transfer D, Philippine Airlines counter. Okay, thanks. Thank you. At check-in Terminal 3, Officer Grace has a baggage problem of a different kind. $400 of excess weight and a passenger okay. who doesn't want to pay for it. I go from Incheon to Beijing and from Beijing back to the United States. But today you're just going up to Incheon? Yeah. It, it came out like this. The confirmation is But different. the thing is, I booked it all through United. I'm getting like United points for this. It's not an Ashana thing. So, I, I mean, I just don't understand. If I brought three bags in, right. what do you want me to do with the other two bags when I leave? Yeah. I don't live in Singapore. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. This passenger can't understand why the airline wants to charge her for the extra 23 kilos when she flew the first leg of her journey from America to Singapore without paying a single cent. It's not a peace concept because you're not traveling to the States. So we are going by a weight concept this time because you're traveling only up to Incheon. Then what yeah, am I supposed I to do with the other two bags? Uh, like, it doesn't matter how many bags you check in them. You can check in five bags, you can check in six bags, but the weight has to be there. So uh, for your gold status, um, economy is 20, Ashina gives additional 3, and then the gold status will give you additional 20. So you're allowed to check in for 43. And then you want me to carry on 20 then? I mean, because right now I have 60. Correct. Just make sure that there's no liquid in the one that you're hand carrying. Yeah, that's, that's Liquid cool. gels. Wait, I think I have liquid in here, so I have to do. Helen's plan is to transfer 20 kilos of excess weight to her hand luggage to avoid the penalty. I have never done this before because usually I am a platinum status on United and I don't need to do this. She's determined to make this work. Okay. Does this make it? Can you come and check this? See if this works? Okay, that works. Okay. It's looking good. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I am. I'm just trying to close it now. I'm going to sit on it. I hope it doesn't rip. There Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's all done. Yeah. Back at arrivals terminal two, <laughs> Kyle's on the phone to his mean? sister. Perfect. Um, yeah, they're, they're really helpful. They said that they'll print it out for me here. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks very much. She's booked two flights for me. One going to Bali tomorrow, and then the next one, she's booked me a flight to Brisbane on the 16th of October. But yeah, it seems like everything's sorted. Yes. So it's a massive relief. Thank you very much for all your help. Welcome. Okay, I'll just like leave a note for them. Okay, I'll just log out of this. It's the end of Nina's shift. 
and after a missed flight and lots of waiting around, it looks like Kyle's finally back in the game. I don't know if it's just been picked up by mistake. So everything's been booked, everything's finalised. We've just got our booking from the airline and now the passports come walkies. Will Kyle find his passport or is it game over for this intrepid backpacker? So I don't know if it's just fallen down. Will Agent Marbuba convince a passenger that she's been scammed? It's a fake ticket, man. Someone has edited it. And what will Kumar make of this rich discovery? Sir, may I know why are you bringing so much of currency? At Changi Airport, there's approximately one flight every 90 seconds. But Kyle isn't on one yet. He's trying to get to Bali to party with friends. Terminal 2, in the world's best airport, is not where he wants to be. Unable to board a plane to Bali without an onward-bound ticket, this free spirit lacks the means to purchase one. His sister has bailed him out and paid for a ticket, but now his passport has gone walkabout. Sorry, can you check with the lady if she accidentally picked up her passport? The passport was... Yeah, she was standing. Don't think it could fit through there. Oh, no. I didn't check in. It's OK. Thank you. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. So accidentally. Yeah. Oh, I almost died there. A passenger It's part of the fun and games. Really. It's with him already. OK, OK. <laughs> OK, you can go home now in peace. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he has his passport and he has his itinerary. Please give it. <laughs> All Kyle needs to do now is not lose his passport and wait. At Changi's customer service desks, there is a never-ending stream of passengers with problems. I check the system. And sometimes and the agents have to deliver bad news. Yeah, At Terminal 2 arrivals, a mother and daughter have approached Agent yeah, Mabuba. The daughter has come to meet her fiancé for the first time. OK, you talk to the officer, OK? But she's received a call from customs to say that her fiancé has been detained for carrying excess cash into Singapore. You had been in the airport since afternoon? No, 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 just, just here. And she needs to pay a fine of $15,000 into his bank account to release him. Uh, yeah, you can give me your phone number, uh, your passport number, yes. because we are at the counter here, yeah, you can't see me, you see. Uh, you, 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 hold on, you speak to the officer, can or not? You get the officer and the passport. Agent Marbuba has heard it all before, but goes ahead and calls customs. Hi, good afternoon, sir. There are two ladies here looking out for this passenger, George Haley. Uh, he has probably landed this afternoon by Malaysia Airlines MH603. So what they're telling me is uh, they received a phone call today from ICA. One of the officers has called them and told them that uh, uh, he was being held up at the ICA because he was taking uh, excess amount of uh, cash uh, without declaring. Uh, as for them, he's holding a US passport. Uh, yeah, I will let them know. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. The fiancé is not at customs, and it looks like the daughter may have been duped. This is his phone number. You can't get through this number. You can call back, but she is not willing to talk to me. Yeah. Which officer? Inside. I just called them, no such passenger. It's a fake ticket, ma'am. Someone has edited it. What is the reason that he is bringing so much cash? I want to marry him. Doesn't work like this, because he just finished job at Malaysia. 
You need to trust what I'm saying is because I'm telling you from my experiences. They are definitely trying to fool you to get some scam. That's what my officer told me to get you more information. We have been experiencing this many times in the airport. Which is also a wrong information. Some ladies who were totally in love with the guy would transfer money yeah, and come to me and say that I have already transferred money, what do I do? Most cases it's totally a scam. Some people's boyfriends even send them a scanned copy of passport, which is a fake passport, yeah. You can Google their name and the passport comes in a Google, just print it out. In Terminal 3 Transit, Agent JR has a second visit from a confused passenger who may have had one drink too many. They closed the counter already. No, it's open, but they are shouting all the time. They don't want to sell us. They mm. want to buy a return and back ticket. Ah, return ticket going to Saudi. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like Kyle, he needs an onward bound ticket. But are you sure you don't have any return ticket to Riyadh? Yes. How come you didn't book? I don't want to go back. You didn't? Oh, you didn't want to go back? Yes. I don't want to go back to Riyadh. I want to go to any other country. You just See. want to go to Manila? After that, After I that? don't know. I'll decide. Maybe I'll go to Cambodia. Maybe I'll go to Thailand. Okay, Maybe. it's okay. But I the thing know. is, you just need an outbound ticket. How come your agent didn't know this? Ask him. <laughs> any regulations, they won't let you fly? Without a return ticket. So what shall I do? Do you have to book your return ticket then? I will book mm. anything I pay. I will shall I pay. What shall because I you do? don't have a return ticket based on this itinerary. Oh, where do you want to go then? I'll help you to Cambodia. book the ticket. Cambodia. Okay, we'll go to Cambodia then. Uh, but shall, after that, when I go to Cambodia, they tell me where is the yeah. time ticket. Also. When, you go to, when you go to Cambodia, you need a ticket again going to Riyadh, okay? Uh, this is the one. Let me take mm. it from now on. Of course. I must go now. I don't have to. I'm sorry, just relax now. We are trying Hello. to help you out because the, it's already the situation. You still have a book on your ticket. Okay. Because they will think you'll be overstaying in the country. Oh. This passenger may be a little light-headed, but it seems he's already been on to his travel agent about the ticket. I'm from Manila, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love Boracay. Yeah, it's happening. I want to stay there. Yeah. You love the place there. <laughs> Boracay and Manila. Yeah. Everything is good. It's his agent again. Oh, someone booked your ticket already? Yeah. From Manila to Saudi? Yeah. Oh. All he needs now is a printout. This is mine? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> At baggage collection, Kamar and his team are, as always, on the lookout for anything out of the ordinary. Today, the scanner has revealed a large sum of cash in a passenger's bag. So, holiday in Singapore, five days. Yes, How much money you bring to Singapore? I don't mind. 10,000 US. 10,000 US. Can you show me? It's not a currency control. You can bring in any amount, but you need to make a declaration, anything that is above Singapore $20,000. This requirement is in place to detect and monitor currency movements and to enable the authorities to take enforcement action against cash couriers financing terrorism or money laundering. That's over 34,000 Singapore dollars. Sir, so may I know why are you bringing so much of currency? That's your medication. When is your appointment? Tomorrow. And because this cash has not been declared, Kamar will need to establish exactly what the money is for. Pull us to the office, please. They have mentioned to us that they are here for some medical examination. And uh, sadly, they don't have any documents to prove. So we need to investigate further. Uh, let's see how it goes before we hand over the Singapore Police Force. In Terminal 1 Transit, this passenger has now made it to the transfer counter. He now has the booking confirmation of his outward bound ticket. All right, if earlier on, if you bring this thing, the uh, return ticket out. You should have been on the flight. 
I, I just pay it now because yeah. nobody tells me. About okay, so now now they're gonna put you on the uh, next flight. So um, you just uh, take a seat first. Once I done the booking for you, I issue you the boarding pass. I call you. Okay. You have a seat first, right? Back at the baggage duty office, Kamar needs to establish why this passenger failed to declare that he was carrying over thirty-four thousand dollars in cash. If he's not satisfied with the answer, he will hand this passenger over to the police. Okay, earlier he was telling me that he needs to go and see the doctor tomorrow. He has an appointment. I'm repeating again. Does he have any documents to? Tell you what, I'll send someone. Perhaps he'll escort. He'll be escorted to meet your mum. Just get the, uh, the relevant documents, okay? Mm. So you follow the Okay. Just, you'll be able to assist me to interpret your debt. Okay? This is a requirement. Finally, they have conclusive proof of the doctor's appointment. This is a chance I'm giving you because you need to make a declaration. Okay, guys? Currency all okay? Okay, sir? Good? Okay. Thank you so much. Changi Tower, Changi Tower, this is Ops Commander. So we're just waiting for the runway to close. After that, the logistics team will um, enter the runway to get prepped up. Every year, Changi Airport tests the readiness of its firefighters with a full-blown emergency aircraft crash exercise. Observers and auditors assess procedures and proficiency and the prowess of their new commander, Alexander. To be honest, I was lying in bed, I was worrying, yes. I've had, I, I've had nightmares. But crash exercise newbie Shifel is more confident. I'm prepared for it, because I've been training for it. Yeah. So for physical-wise, there's no problem for me. So yeah. Now, Changi's airport emergency services are moving to the standby positions. They've been notified that an aircraft has a double hydraulic failure and is due to land in 20 minutes. But putting out the flames fast enough is exactly what this new operations commander has to do. Trial by fire. Will Alexander's worst nightmare come true? And will Kyle finally be able to celebrate? Don't damage the apple. Changi may be the world's best airport, but all Kyle wants to do is sleep. But not before a well-earned beer. I think if anyone told me that this is how it was going to end up at the end of today, I obviously wouldn't have believed them. But you just got to laugh about it now that it's all over. So, yeah. It's quite... I mean, I've got a beer. I'm on a flight tomorrow. Um, and I'll eventually get to Bali, so... I'm just glad that I'm all on any time budget and I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Can't seem to find anything to open the beer with. But we will we'll keep trying. We will keep trying. <clears throat> Apparently, I haven't had a bad enough day, so I can't be rewarded with a beer. No. Don't want to damage the apple. Snap. Trying to open his beer is probably more stressful than the whole thing that happened today with the flights and everything. 
and nothing stresses me out. Beautiful. Every time it just gets better. Under Alexander's command, the men of the airport emergency services have to rescue 156 plane crash casualties and evacuate them to the triage area where injuries will be assessed and prioritized. Shifel is one of the officers responsible for moving the casualties to the triage area from the collection point. Initially, I will reach there, I will set up a tent where we collect all the casualties. In just two minutes, the flames are out. Alexander's worst nightmare is over. But it's on to the next. Now that the holding area has been erected, Shifel and the other firefighters can get on with the serious business of rescuing injured passengers. Uh, Checking top ops, Commander, be advised we have uh, rescued uh, first casualty from the aircraft. Running on adrenaline, Shifel is en route to the triage area with a first batch of casualties. Currently, it's OK for me. Currently. But I don't know about later. The casualties are gathered to receive urgent medical attention from paramedics. But with more than 100 casualties still to be rescued, it's not over yet. Back at the crash site, the casualties are stacking up because of a transportation problem. And all of it is being recorded by the exercise assessors. Additional uh, ambulances uh, to be on standby at the uh, CCA for casualty conveyance to CCS. You copy over. With the shortage of ambulances and Shifel having to take the strain, fatigue is starting to set in. And the job of two fire officers has now become the work of four. As this crash test draws to a close, new lessons have been learned and adjustments are to be made. I'm actually very pleased with it. Uh, we were able to um, extinguish the fire really, really fast. Um, and we were able to uh, rescue, all, rescue out all the casualties. Uh, and the important thing is that we accounted for all of them. So that's good. But the night is not over for Shifel and Alexander. Technically, after this exercise ends, uh, I'm still on duty. I end my shift at uh, 8 a.m. It is harsh. What to do? The realities of being a firefighter. Next time on All Access Changi. Ma'am, are you all right? But you see, but you see. Customer service agents deal with extreme cases. Why did you miss your flight? Purposely? Passengers lose precious things. <laughs> Where's the mom? Pets in transit are grounded. They just started the electronic system today. And another is quarantined. If the bird has bird flu, we will have to put it down. <laughs>